He was victorious on Saturday, another thrilling victory for him. Uh, to me, it was one of the best performances of the night, and he is 1,000% a rising star for so many different reasons. I'm so excited to have him on the program for the first time. He is Peyton Talbot representing Reno, Nevada. There he is. Peyton, what's happening, my man? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure, and uh, congratulations on the win. So excited to have you on because there's so much I want to talk to you about, and uh, it seems like the fans are interested in uh, in hearing more from you as well. So this is great stuff. First off, a uh, tremendous win for you, and and what a knee that led to the victory. That that knee, man, it sound, like I was saying earlier, it sounded like when you're a kid playing baseball with an aluminum bat, like that sound isn't like a normal sound that you hear when you feel that connection, when you feel that impact, when you hear that sound, what is going through your head? Um, it was super loud, but watching it back was even louder. That's what was crazy. Um, but I just, it felt really good. Like it's just hitting that sweet spot. Like right when you, uh, I think I landed it right here, but right when you feel bone, like on a sharp object, like your knee, that's exactly what you want to feel. And, um, I was, surprised that he didn't go down yeah uh but eventually that was sort of the beginning of the end it was uh an incredibly impressive performance from you once again and now i feel like you're, you know you, you get the contender series fight out of the way you get the ufc debut out of the way you get the second one out of the way now do you feel like you're just kind of now you're just in the ufc career right like this is now a thing for you the the uh, you don't strike me as a jitters kind of guy you don't strike me as a nervous kind of guy you know, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but now it just feels like you're, you're flowing now with the career. Yeah. Yeah. It feels extremely normal. I think even leading up to that fight week, I was like oddly calm and didn't really have many nerves. And my mind was like wondering, I felt so present walking into the cage. So I was like, is this a problem? <laughs> but I think it's just, I'm, I'm, it's just normal. It's my career now. Are you, are you usually typically in your career prior to this fight, a nervous kind of guy before a fight, an anxious kind of guy? No, I mean, I have some nerves, but they usually come throughout the day when I'm just waiting around for the fight. But as soon as I start moving my body, I feel great. Like, I don't have any nerves. Okay. Um, can I ask about the celebration? Uh, last one was interesting. I saw this time uh, on the ESPN MMA account, you said you didn't quite hit the celly. The celebration, I enjoy. It's different. Why didn't you like it? And what is up with the celebrations? That's like a like a crumping move. It's like somebody getting, like, shocked and, like, you know, stomping or whatever. But I've like done that before when I'm like out dancing with my friends and it looks sick when you have like clothes on because the clothes are shaking, like especially if you have baggy clothes or whatever. And I've never done it just with a shirt off and fight shorts. And I like watched it back and I was like, there's no like effect. It's just me like shaking like <laughs> retard. Like, um, but I mean, I guess it looks cool. It was different, but not my best. Uh, have you done a unique celebration after every one of your wins? Yeah, most of them. It's usually that slow-mo walk. Um, that's kind of my thing, but I like to change it up every once in a while, just like with my walkout music and everything. I like to keep people on their toes. So, um, I, I know that uh, people have asked you a lot about your hair, and you said uh, you have no interest in braiding it. There has to be like a point where you can't let it get much longer because at some point it's... And I know you said it's like a force field that protects you and all that stuff, but it's rare to see a fighter with such a large amount of hair do you feel like there's a point or are you just going to keep letting it grow? No, I, I trim it. I'm going to keep it out of my eyes. I've actually been in the back room, like warming up. And if there's like a lock, like over my eye, I'll just grab the scissors and just cut it. Okay. Um, so I'm not like too attached to that, but one of these days you're going to see me looking just like you. I'm going to shave my head and just the whole like surprise thing? everyone. One of these days. Yeah. I've been bald. I was bald for like nine months straight. Really enjoyed it. Like, so underrated, just yeah. being bald. I'm sure you understand. Yes. I used to have a um, massive afro, too, when I was in college. Like, essentially the same style of hair. Very thick hair, very curly hair. And then one day, after a year and a half of not touching it, I went to this and haven't, haven't looked back. That was, like, 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you had a big fuzzball on your head. Yes. Uh, so I can understand the appeal of this. In my case, the girls didn't like it as much. A lot of the girls were telling me to cut it. They liked this more. I feel like in your case, the girls like it. What, what do they say? What do they say about the hair? Yeah, I think if they saw me bald, some of them would get scared away. <laughs> I look kind of scary when I'm bald. <laughs> um, okay, all that's great. Uh, now, can we get into the YouTube channel? Because uh, I, was, uh, I, I was doing a little prep, as I like to do before uh, guests come on, especially for the first time. And uh, I came across your YouTube channel. 
And this is a piece of work, my friend, because we have a lot of fighters right now doing YouTube stuff, right? They're all doing breakdowns. They're doing clickbaity stuff. They're doing debates. Yours couldn't be any further away. Some of the um, responses that I got, I, I tweeted about your YouTube channel, just telling people how fascinating I thought it was and that they should check it out. And then some of the replies to the tweet were hilarious, made me laugh out loud, just comparing it to like old 90s and one mixtape VHS, you know, compilations and uh, like being on an acid trip and just like avant-garde type stuff. Uh, for the, And we're showing some footage right now. Could I ask, what is the inspiration behind doing videos like this on YouTube, first and foremost? Well, like, wh wh what are you drawing from when you're doing this? Um, just my brain. Like, I feel like those videos are, you know, somewhat oriented towards fighting in the day-to-day, -day, but um, I try to get as much of just, like, my brain and subconscious out onto the screen as possible, me and my editor who I worked with. So um, I think it, there's so many you know, deep rabbit holes that I've gone down on in terms of like taste and all of these passions that I've collected throughout my life. And I like when I'm spitting back out to the public to just kind of summarize and almost just be like brain food for people to like, you know, if you get the reference, you get the reference and it's like, it's enjoyable. It's extremely enjoyable. Now, the second question was regarding the channel, who is the editor? I was wondering if it was you, clearly not. So what is the process here? in terms of putting this together and how long does it take to make one of these? They seem to be like 12, 13, 14 minutes. Yeah. So William Allen Harris is the main editor. I edit a good portion of the stuff in there, like some of the acute stuff that I like, I'm like, Hey, I really want you to put this in because I love video editing. Um, and I can get a lot of my personality out and to the video because of that, but me and William are becoming more aligned. So I trust him more. Um, but he's done, he works for like some kind of agency, but he's done a lot of like special progress, uh, projects for, um, like music videos and stuff, but I just really loved his style. And I thought that like we would click for sure. And it's, I mean, the last video I posted was like, perfect. That's like oh, was amazing. both of our brains on the screen for sure. Yeah. Uh, you studied uh, psychology in, uh, in college, right? You're a psychology major. Am I, am I right on that? Yeah. What, what got my bachelor's in it? What what kind of psychology? Like, is there a specific type that you studied, or just general? Um, well, I did general, but um, towards my later years, I got super into the neuroscience courses, and those were more interesting to me. But I started out wanting to do clinical. Okay, and so how did you end up in fighting in in cage fighting? Um, I got into that when I was a senior in high school, like right when I graduated. I like didn't have sports anymore, and I was just super bored. Um, and I'd always been interested in psychology. So I just, I did both of those. Um, I was an amateur fighter and pro fighter while I was still in college, um, getting my degree. Did you grow up doing martial arts? No, no, I wrestled in high school, but that's, that's it. So how did you transition to just even taking an amateur fight? Uh, I trained for about eight, eight or nine months, like pretty consistently almost every day. Um, and I was just, I just loved training. And my coach finally came up to me. I don't think we had really any fighters at the time. And he's like, Hey, um, my, the gym that I trained at used to be notorious for like just a fight gym. Like back in the day, we had tons of fighters in there. And then, um, it went a very commercial route. And then I came in and he's like, Hey, um, I th I'm thinking you should fight soon. Like, how do you feel about that? And I was like, fuck yeah. I want to like put my skills to the test and I love competing. So, um, yeah, the rest is history from there. I believe your mom is a plastic surgeon, right? Yes, she is. How, how does she feel about her son? You know, you're a good looking guy getting punched in the face and maybe having to need plastic surgery at some point in his life. She didn't like it at first. I think she still struggles with it a little bit, but she, um, she just trusts that I'm like having fun and it makes me really happy. And she just takes comfort in knowing that if anything were to happen to my face and though it hasn't yet, she'd be able to stitch me right back up. Um, she actually did like a surgery on my nose when I first started because my nose got like extremely broken. Wow. Um, and I always tell her like, I'll never go to you for surgery again because she just treated me like her son, like not like a patient. It was terrible. Oh, come on. Your mom. I mean, that's a dream to have you. Like no one's going to treat you better than your mom. No, that's what? the, that's so not true. She treated, she was like a car mechanic and she treated me like a beat up old pickup truck. Really? She, this is yeah. her boy. That's crazy to me. I would love to go to my mom as a doctor. Yeah, no, she she wasn't going to give me, like, anesthesia for this, like, <laughs> nose splint she was going to put up my nose, like, super deep. And she went out of the room, and I, like, rifled through the drawers, took a bunch of these pain pills, 
And I guess she found me like passed out in the middle of the hallway in her office and was like livid and like dragged me back into the room. I was like barely conscious, threw me into the chair and like just did the small surgery. Oh my gosh. Uh, Did she watch your fights? Will she watch them live? Yeah. Yeah. She was at the last one live. Oh wow. She was at the apex. Yeah. Now I understand you've never actually been to a UFC event as a fan. Like you've never been to an event with fans, like, like, like a, a full arena, right? Yeah, never been. Is it is there a reason for that or just not lined up in terms of no, not like you know as a fan growing up, you never, you know, you live in Nevada, so not too far from Vegas. No, I've never I was never a fan of MMA until I started doing it when I was like 18 actually, 17 or 18. Wow, so you didn't grow up watching anything. You were, were you even aware of what the UFC was? No, I didn't even know what it was until I was sitting at a sushi restaurant and I saw Conor McGregor highlights or something for some fight that was coming up. And I was like looking at it. I was like, that, there's no way that that's actually a thing. Like people are actually allowed to fight in a cage. Um, and then I started thinking about it. I was like, I'd like to try that. Like I'm super bored. So, but I never knew what it was before then. What, as a kid growing up, like what was your dream? What did you want to become? Uh, I thought I wanted to do football for a while and then I stopped growing. Um, and then I thought I wanted to be a musical performance guy. Um, I played guitar and bass, Thought I wanted to do music therapy, Thought I wanted to be a psychologist, but I hate people's problems. And then, um, yeah, I didn't want to start really being a fighter until I was like two and I was a pro. So I hate people's problems. What do you mean by that? Ah, it's just like the mental health field. Like half of them just don't want to help themselves. So it gets like really frustrating coming from me. Like a person who I am is just like a very like simple problem fixer guy. Like try to give these people these tips or I try to walk them through how to get better. And it's just like, at the end of the day, they don't want to help themselves. You know, they just want something to feel upset about. So I got pretty burnt out on that. It's interesting to hear you say that. Cause I, I saw in the post fight press conference, you were talking about the Doberman shirt that you were wearing and uh, one of the the qualities was sensitive. And you said, well, I'm not sensitive, like comparing yourself to the Doberman. So not sensitive and you hate people's problems. Sounds like you're, you're, you're a very empathetic person. You, uh, you'd be great in a relationship. I'm sure, I'm sure you've not heard this before. Oh uh, yeah. It works, works wonders <laughs> for women. Yeah. Um, so, so, so like as far as post fighting, do you have, cause I feel like you're the type of person that would have you know, many great aspirations and dreams post athletic endeavors. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff that I would like to do. Um, I'm like picking up trying to learn how to DJ right now. So being able to do that with more time on my hands would be cool. Um, I'd like to do something with clothes in the future. Um, or I want to see where this uh, YouTube thing kind of goes with all these videos. And I'd like to, uh, do something more creative and more, um, you know, not so focused on fighting, just kind of have it be its own thing. Um, just like artistic expression. Uh, is there someone that you draw inspiration from when you like, is there, is there a type of video or a video maker producer, whatever that you are kind of emulating when you're putting these together? Yeah, I think David Cho is like brilliant. <clears throat> He's for sure an inspiration. Um, and then you can see a lot of the imp- inspiration and the references we draw on the videos like fight club, I'm really big on that. And a lot of the stuff that they preach, um, um, and then just like cinematic classics, I think there's a couple in there. I can't think of them right now, but, um, yeah. I did want to ask you, and you can shoot straight with me. Um, you're, you're a, a skateboarder, right? You like the fancy, uh, getting on a skateboard. I love, yeah. I love Nike SBs, but I'm not cool enough to skateboard. Am I a poser? Like, would you look down on someone who wears SBs, but doesn't actually skate? It depends on the shoe. Like oh, if you damn. got a toe cap, yeah, you, you gotta you gotta take those off. Wait, what's a toe cap? Is that like the the fat tongue? Oh, no, that? that's like the rubber thing. Okay, okay. Around the toe. No, no, no. I'm good. I just have like like these. I'll, I'll take them off if you don't mind. I, I mean, because yeah. I'm a little bit self conscious about this. Like you see, like these are SBs. They have the fat tongue. I like the fat tongue. Am I a poser for wearing these? You could shoot no, straight. No, you're not a poser. No, you wouldn't. There's look- a that, that looks like a little cut like. 
Maybe a little toe cap, but I'll no, give you a pass on those. No because... toe cap. I know the ones you're talking about because in your video, you got them from a thrift store. That was my other issue with you. Buying secondhand shoes might be top three grossest things I've ever seen a human being do. Like how? And you said that's the only way to buy them. How could you wear used shoes? It's disgusting. Athlete's foot, all kinds of grossness. They go on your feet. Yeah, but you don't they know what people... They touch are... your feet. You have socks on. Oh, says who? How do you know the previous owner was wearing socks? Well, you can wear socks. I know, but still, like, are they clean? I don't know. I feel like shoes should be designed to last a long time, just like for what they are. So, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go and buy some like really nasty, sweaty, beat up shoes. But like, if you're skating in shoes and you're going to beat the shit out of them anyway, I feel like you should, you know, just buy them already worn in a little bit. I also hate wearing shoes in. That's like awful to me. Like, my feet are kind of oddly shaped. So, if I go to the thrift store and I find like a nice pair of shoes that are like barely worn in, they just fit like a glove. And I just get to like skip that whole process of fitting them to my feet. I feel like we align on this. I actually don't like this new thing where everyone, it seems like they're wearing shoes, especially like dunks, Nike dunks. And it looks like they've never worn them before. I actually respect people that have beat up shoes. I think that's actually cooler than having shoes that look like they've never been touched. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little off to me if there's like no, if they're like brand new and squeaky yeah. clean, I like want to step on them. Of course. I want to kind of like rub some dirt on them. I agree. I think it says, uh, it says more about that person than us. Cause I get a lot of people be like, bro, you've been wearing those for so long. I'm like, yeah, I'm proud of that. They're in good condition. They've got character. They've been through the ringer, you know, they've seen some things. I think that's actually cooler. I don't, I can't, I, I don't have war stories as far as me on the, you know, the skate park scene, but I, I don't know. I, I wanted to ask a skater if I'm okay with wearing these. Um, I also wanted to ask yeah. you about your tattoos, the big circle in the front and the big circle in the back. What does that represent? Um, that's supposed to signify like a hole going through oh. the center of my body. Why is that? Um, it just, you know, represents like an internal void, um, like a black hole going through the middle of the chest. Okay. Uh, is that something you came up with or did you see that somewhere? Yeah, I, it draws inspiration from Bleach. That's what a lot of people, you know, on social media are like crazy about. Um, but uh, some of the characters in that show have holes like somewhere on their body. And the hole like represents the removal of like the soul and emotion. Um, and that's like what ties you to like your body in physical form. So um, they're called like hollows. Um, and then the people and the show are usually like on the villain side and they're like extremely powerful. So that's where it draws inspiration from just like the look and design of it. But the idea is just like, yeah, internal void that I've always felt. You've always felt this void. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I think everybody feels it a little bit. It's like everybody feels the call of the void, you know, when standing on top of a super tall structure, it's like kind of similar to that thing, but I just feel like, um, it's just a little bit more intense with me and it's just like all the time. <laughs> Do you want to be famous or are you dreaming of days that you're a superstar making a lot of money and everyone knows you and you're the face of the UFC? Is this, is this appealing to you? Uh, there's parts of it that are, but not really like a lot. A lot of this has been like kind of crazy and just like hard to deal with. It's been a learning process, but um, you know, I like money. I like living life on easy mode. I like not having to have a job. That's awesome. But, um, I also like my private life and I miss, you know, things that I used to have before. Do you have a job now outside of fighting? No. Okay. That is good. Did you have a job yeah. prior to the UFC? Yeah. I was a barista for a while. Um, I used to work in a neurotherapy clinic. That's where I did like some of that therapy work stuff. Okay. Uh, your thoughts on uh, almond milk, oat milk? You okay with this? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm I'm a milk guy. I'll just drink regular milk, but you're, I you're, like almond milk. What about this raw milk craze? How do you feel about that? Like I haven't actually tried any, so I don't know. But it, I mean, the idea sounds right. I feel like milk. From when I was a ten year old, I used to drink gallons and gallons of milk, like all the time, and. I feel like there was a day I was like drinking milk and I was like, this does not taste right. This tastes different. And from that day on, I like couldn't go back to drinking it. Like they must've done something, but recently I've gone back to uh, drinking like the pasteurized stuff or whatever, like the healthier stuff. And it kind of tastes like how I used to okay. drink when I was a kid. 
Um, the 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 fingernails. You're missing one nail as far as it being painted. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. And I was like I said, you gotta keep them on their toes. Yeah, yeah. All I right. usually just like leave one out. Yeah. Okay. Is it always black? Usually, yeah. Oh, but I do you, white sometimes. But on that one, the one that's missing is the pinky. Wow. You are an enigma. That is something. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about when people compare you to Sean O'Malley? Do you like that? You know how I feel about that. I hate that shit. Oh, actually, I don't um, know. Well, have you talked about this? I'm sorry if I missed it. Yeah, they people just do it all the time. I said in a couple of interviews, I just I don't like being compared to them because I don't think we fight very similar. I think we have some similarities. Like I get it. We have the hair. We have like the long one twos. Um, and we do like some movement things well, but <clears throat> if you were to see me and him fight, it would be a very uh, different stylistic fight. You know, we would, I'd be pushing the pace and I'd be trying to be up in his face and make it a dog fight. And he would be um, drawing out reactions and feigning me and, um, you know, technically trying to outclass me. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're the kind of person who would rather not be compared to anyone. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's mainly what it is. It, it could be, I mean, Sean's a cool guy, so it doesn't really piss me off too much, but yeah, it could be anyone. I don't want to be compared. Yeah. But I've heard you say that Dennis Rodman is your spirit animal. Yeah. That dude's tight. Yeah. Who doesn't like Dennis Rodman? <laughs> I hated Dennis Rodman as a kid cause I was a Knicks fan and he was on the bulls, but I respect the fact that he just uh, did his thing, uh, lived his life, was a free spirit uh, was, I think, engaged to Carmen Electra as a 14-year-old kid. Like, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I mean, there's a lot to like as far as Dennis Rodman is concerned. What what, what about Dennis Rodman makes you feel that connection to him? Um, Just that he's himself, like, in any scenario. Like, he doesn't care about what people are going to say. Um, he's a little bit of a jester when it comes to getting reaction out of people, and he's really good at it. Um, and he just is a hundred percent himself, like unapologetically. So that's what I dig. I don't care. Like if you're the most awful person or if you're a terrible villain, like as long as you're a hundred percent yourself and you're true to that, you know, I would, I would rather people hate me for being who I am than to just feel indifferent about me. Like indifference is the worst fate of all. I'd rather be hated by 90% of people and loved by 10. Well, I would say right now it seems to be the complete opposite for you, if not more. Uh, a lot of people are loving what you're doing. And and I heard you say MSG would be a place that you would like to fight. You've never been to New York, which, uh, I mean, what a great excuse to come fight at the Mecca. But that's in November. That's not to say that you want to wait until November for your next fight, right? No, I'd like to fight late summer. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to give myself a little month to... Uh decompress and then i want to fine tune some things in the practice room and really drill some stuff okay and um you know this time in front of a crowd like look we get you in front of a crowd for goodness sakes enough of this already right yes please okay that's all you want you don't really care where i i, I get the sense you just want to be in front of thousands of people doing your thing yeah i'm not going to australia okay so that's like that's the only no one go why <laughs> yeah those insects are way too big <laughs> I, f I feel I feel like the celly would be actually a lot more on point with a crowd. You could feed off their energy. It's hard to do it when you're in an empty like warehouse, you know? Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And I think I would I have a lot of fans that just want to go see me in person, like amongst my group of people and then, you know, in the fight community. Last thing, uh the uh, uh forgive me for getting it wrong if I am getting it wrong, the rug in back of you, what does that represent? Oh, that is um I don't, I think it's like a, from a famous painting or something, but I got it at a thrift store for like two bucks. Wow. It's like this place where you buy based on the weight of the item. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of shit and like a lot of garbage you got to go through, but this was one of the gems I found there. Okay. Again with the thrift store, huh? Interesting. That's yeah. That's everything I wear. Everything. Even the t-shirts. Yep. Mm. This is a thrift store find. I did see that you opened a package from something about birds not being real, and that looked like it had never been worn before. I saw that in your YouTube video. So, yeah, did I get yeah. You? Okay, you caught me. Yeah. Like, if they're if they're gifted to me, <laughs> if they're gifted to me, I'll wear them. I'll wear or will retail, but um, I try to buy, you know, secondhand. Okay, fair <clears> enough. <throat> but as you can see, I'm watching the videos and uh, enjoy them very much. So keep it up, and uh, congrats on all your success. Great to have you on the show. Great to see what you're doing and uh, love the fact that you are 
as you said, unapologetically yourself. Um, I think that's very admirable. So thanks for the time, man. Congrats again and, and uh, keep it up. Looking forward to seeing you thanks. climb the ladder in the UFC. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.